Not everyone has access to investing, which is one way to build wealth. And over time, that can create a wealth gap, which especially affects ethnic communities. Today, we're going to talk about causes of generational wealth and how to close the gap. Before we get started, I must tell you that I am not a financial advisor and this is not personalized investing advice. So now that we've gotten that out the way, let's get into the good stuff, which is about generational wealth. So first of all, let's define generational wealth. Essentially, it's when you take assets and you pass them down to future generations. Now, for those of you wondering what type of assets I'm talking about, it could be anything from a retirement account, such as an IRA or 401k. It could be cash, real estate, stocks, a life insurance policy, and essentially anything under the sun that can be characterized as an asset. So what is causing the generational wealth gap in the U.S. at the moment? There are many drivers, but the first one that I'm going to touch on is inheritances. Now, people of color are less likely, especially black and brown families, to receive an inheritance than white families are. Why is this important? Because if we don't receive inheritances, then it takes a lot longer for us to build wealth and we don't get the same financial boost that other families who do receive inheritances get. Now, the numbers are quite staggering because in the U.S., there's a $200 billion annual gap between black and white recipients of inheritances. Huge. I know. So now let's take everything that I've just said and put it into perspective using a real life example. I'm going to use myself as the example here. So my mom dies, knock on wood, because she's still alive, but she leaves me an inheritance of $10,000. Being the financially savvy investor I am, I take that $10,000 and I put it in an S&P 500 index fund for the next 10 years. Let's say the rate of return on that fund is about 10%. Now let's use the nerd wallet calculator to see what that $10,000 investment will turn into. Now, if I don't touch that money, neither do I add any money to it, that $10,000 would turn into $25,938. Over 20 years, that initial $10,000 investment would turn into over $67,000 thanks to compound interest. Now, I must put a clause in there and say that that 10% average rate of return that I just mentioned is just that. It's an average. So if you invested $10,000, you might not get that amount that I mentioned. You might get more or less, but it's just to help you put things into perspective so you can see the power of investing and building wealth with an inheritance. So the next driver that I'm going to talk about is home ownership. Now, when it comes to ethnic communities, they're also less likely to own homes. Among all home buyers, white American home buyers made up the largest share at 82% in 2021, followed by Hispanic Latino at 7%, Asian Pacific Islander and African Americans, both at 6% and 2% other. So outside of ethnic communities, having lower home ownership rates, another driver is them having fewer or no investments. Now, why is this important? Because both home equity and retirement accounts accounted for 65.2% of household wealth in 2019. So if people don't have these two important things, then it's difficult for them to build wealth, basically. Other drivers include systemic racism, the wage gap, a lack of access to financial education, and also racial and ethnic minority groups being less likely to trust banks or have bank accounts at all. So who is most affected by the generational wealth gap? Well, you might have noticed by some of the stats that we've just shared that white families tend to be less affected than people of color. According to a 2019 survey of consumer finances published by the Federal Reserve, white American families have median and mean family wealth of around 188K on the low to upwards of $983,000 versus Black families who tend to range from 24K to around 142K and Hispanic families average from roughly 36K to $165,000. So one thing that really stood out for me is that the high end of wealth for Black and Hispanic families is below the low end of wealth for white families. So now that we can see the causes of generational wealth and how glaring they are, let's talk about how we can close the gap through investing. The first strategy I'm going to talk about is creating an investing strategy. So you may be wondering, why is that important, Elizabeth? Because an investing strategy tells you how you're going to build wealth. It's all good and well to say that you want to build wealth, but if you don't have a strategy, then how are you going to get there? So an investing strategy has two primary components. Firstly, it's creating your financial goals and then it's mapping out how you're going to get there. 
So let's start with creating your financial goals. It's important that you choose goals that make you feel excited because you're in this for the long term. Building wealth is a slow grind. It takes time, unless, of course, you get really lucky. Um, so you need goals that are going to excite you. Does the prospect of being able to pay for your great, great grandchildren's college fund excite you? Then maybe that's the kind of goal that you need to have. Do you like the idea of being able to retire early so that you can help your children look after their kids and they can save money on childcare? Then maybe that's a goal that you should have. Now, the second leg of your investing strategy is how you're going to do it. There are two primary ways that you can go about it. Of course, there are more, but the two I'm going to highlight are active investing and passive investing. Now, active investing is ideal for people who like to get into the stock market, see what's going on. They like choosing their assets and balancing their portfolios. And essentially, they're just really hands on. Now, for people like me who don't have time for that, we prefer passive investing approaches. Now, there are several ways that you can go about passive investing, but some include uh, using a robo advisor, using a financial advisor, buying ETFs and then kind of just automating it, which is something that I do. Another thing about passive investing is it's usually cheaper and it tends to have higher returns as well. Retirement accounts can be another extremely beneficial tool to use to build generational wealth because they happen to be tax advantaged. Now, every retirement account is different and has different kinds of advantages, but the difference is when you enjoy that tax advantage. So I'm going to use two popular accounts as an example, which is the traditional and the Roth IRA. So with the Roth IRA, you put after-tax dollars, which means money that you've already paid taxes on into the account, you invest it, you let compound interest do its magic, and then when you reach retirement age, hopefully you wait till 59 and a half if you can, um, you can withdraw the funds tax-free. So that means you don't owe Uncle Sam a dime. On the other hand, you have traditional IRAs, which is where you put pre-tax dollars into the account. That means money that you haven't paid taxes on. You invest the money, Compound interest does its magic, but when you reach 59 and a half or retirement age, you do have to pay taxes on the money. So as you can see, the tax advantages come in at different times. So it's really about whatever your investing strategy is, as we mentioned earlier, and what your goals are. Employer matches are another way that you can build generational wealth, simply because for employers who do offer these matches, they're essentially giving you free money. So for those who don't know what employer match is, it's when an employer says, hey, Elizabeth, if you contribute $10 to your retirement account, then I'm going to match you and contribute $10 too. They usually cap it at a certain amount, but regardless, you're getting free money that you can put in your investing account, let compound interest do its work and help you build your wealth. So aside from employer matches, other benefits that you can tap into are HSAs, stock options, and also education stipends. So let's say you do all of the incredible things that I mentioned above in terms of going out there and building generational wealth, and you've built some, and then you happen to pass away. What's gonna happen if you don't have an estate plan in place is probate or the courts decide what happens to your wealth. And I'm sure that's not something that you want. So this is why it's so important that families put together an estate plan while they're still alive. So for those who don't know what an estate plan is, it essentially just says what's going to happen to your assets when you die or if you're incapable of making your own financial decisions. Best practice is often to work with an estate professional or financial professional that can help you put that estate plan together. Now, another important thing to do to build generational wealth is to be consistent. As I said earlier, it can be a slow grind and you're in this for the long term. So we're not doing a get rich quick scheme here. However, if we're not consistent, then compound interest can't do its magic and we're not going to build as much wealth over time. Now, the last tip that I'm going to give you is about sharing the knowledge that you're learning, including everything that I've told you in this video. As soon as I learned how to build wealth, it is something I wouldn't shut up about. I shared it with all my friends and family and even with people who didn't want to listen. Now, why I found it sharing so powerful is because if someone applies just one of the things that I share with them, it could change their whole financial trajectory. So whether it's sharing a simple tip with your child, telling your sister about how to invest in ETFs, all of these little things go a long way. Now, I know the information I've shared can feel very overwhelming. Maybe you feel a little discouraged because you haven't started investing. Perhaps you're already investing, but you feel like it's taking too long for your money to grow. 
All of these feelings are valid, but it's just important that you try not to be discouraged and stick with it because starting somewhere is better than starting nowhere. So on that note, I hope all of these tips help us to close the generational wealth gap and I hope you share it with as many people as you know. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Ayola and I am a writer on the investing team. Whether you are a beginner investor or you're more advanced, my team and I have written tons of content that can help you on your investing journey. If you've learned something in this video, which I hope you have, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe.